Every day, one in seven students is woken up by their parents, rushing them, telling them not to be late for school. And as they get, they get up, they brush their teeth, and they comb their hair, they think to themselves, I don't want to go back to that place. I don't want to go back to the place where the children laugh at me, the teachers don't understand me, and the assignments I cannot do. I don't want to go back to a place where I am alone every day and where I feel stupider each day more than the last. Then, as they're rushed off into their car and their parents kiss them goodbye as they drop them off in front of the large brick schoolhouse, the student gets out, they look around, and they see everyone else smiling and rushing into class, and they think, why can't I just be normal like everybody else? This is how I felt every day growing up as a student with a learning disability. I am dyslexic. I'd like to tell you a little bit about dyslexia for some people who are unfamiliar with it. It is a learning disability that uh, creates a hard problem with reading, sometimes writing, spelling, and comprehension. It can make it very difficult in school to understand projects, assignments, or be able to read out loud. So I'd like to tell you about my experience. It, as a child, I went into class, and our teacher would ask us to sit down and read a reading assignment. So we would bring out our books, and each student would read one passage. This terrified me. It was so scary to think that I was going to have to read in front of people and I couldn't even understand the words that were in front of me. So I would sit there and I would count out the students who were going to read in front of me and then I would flip through my book until I found the passage that correlated with mine. I read it over and over and over again until hopefully I could read some of the words and I could feel my teacher staring at me. I knew she thought that I was ignoring her. I was ignoring the assignment and I wasn't paying attention in school. She thought I was a bad student at that point and she knew that I would make a joke and she thought it was to make fun of her curriculum. So she, she would yell at me all the time telling me, please stop flipping the pages and reading ahead. You need to stay with the group. But little did she know, I was not reading ahead. I could barely read the words that were right in front of me. And so I struggled, and when it was my turn, I made a joke. I read a little bit and I joked because the kids would laugh at my jokes instead of laughing at me. It was hard, and as it got closer to my turn, my palms began to sweat and my heart began to race, and I felt sheer panic fall over me. This was so hard to not be able to do one of the simplest tasks that everybody does in an everyday setting. Read. And so as I entered fourth grade, I came in with low hopes, thinking it would be just like any other year. But that was the year that it changed. That was the year that my teacher, Mrs. Ahuja, came in. She was the most caring teacher I've ever had. She changed my views on education. She created what I am today. She was someone who was kind, caring, empathetic. She understood each student and she wanted them to learn. She wanted them to go the way that it was that made most sense to them. And so she took time to learn each individual person. And that is what makes a good teacher. And so she was the one who taught me that I wasn't stupid and that being normal was just overrated. Being different allows you to have so many more advantages and you can learn so many different things and help improve other people's lives as well. So, as I grew up, I kept thinking to myself, there was no way she was the only one. There had to be other empathetic teachers out there. And so I looked, and I did more research about learning disabilities, and I learned that 52% of teachers have no training in students with learning disabilities. But 15% of our population has a learning disability. That's a large portion of our population that is being ignored and neglected in school. We need to change our education system. We need to find more teachers like Mrs. Ahuja. And so I set out to create them. This is when I learned about virtual reality. For those of you who are not familiar with it, it's a very immersive program. It's a headset you put on yourself and you can experience people's lives, places, activities, and things all from the comfort of just sitting right here. But you can be anywhere virtually. In VR, Let's say, have you ever been to Mars? I'm sure you haven't. Have you swam with sharks? Have you seen the Eiffel Tower? Well, in virtual reality, you can. And when you're inside, you get the emotion, you get the feeling of actually physically being there. That is what makes all the difference. 
VR has allowed us to create immersive, understanding technology, unlike what's currently out there. Currently, every day you use your cell phone. You call, you text, you write emails, and you feel that that's a great connection with somebody else. But is it really the connection you're looking for? Do you feel empathetic to somebody? Can you understand a story that they've explained in words? Probably not. Most of the time, you just think of it as your daily life. And so now, virtual reality allows us to do something completely different. It allows us to be immersed in the emotion, the understanding, and experience things that you might never have been able to experience prior to that. And so, with virtual reality, I soon learned that it was not a toy. It was not a game, but it could be used to make real change in people's lives. We could improve the education system by teaching our teachers, our educators, our parents, our friends, our family about learning disabilities from a first-person perspective of a student with a learning disability. And that is why I've created Peers, a virtual reality company that teaches teachers about students with learning disabilities. Within the experience, a teacher, a parent, a friend, like I mentioned, can all be immersed in the moment, understand what those emotions are, experience something that is more than you ever thought you could. And in VR, what's so interesting about it with a learning disability is that those teachers, the teachers I had as a child, the teachers that are learning, teaching every single day, understanding training, they can now understand what it was to feel the way that I was feeling, the way that many other people are feeling. And what's great about that is that you can truly, when my teacher would look back, she could truly understand that I wasn't just flipping the pages to ignore her. I wasn't trying to make a trouble and I wasn't trying to make jokes. I was trying to protect myself from people laughing at me. I was trying to understand the material by slowly reading ahead and learning word by word the way that was best for me. And so, what I've learned is virtual reality doesn't just create empathy, but empathy within itself creates innovation. People, when they understand, they experience, and I mean truly experience and understand something, they want to create change. They want to create solutions and they want to find help to other people. So when teachers experience virtual reality of learning disabilities, they're able to understand what a student's going through and then in turn make it better teaching, better programs, better experiences for so many students that are struggling out there. Virtual reality can bring us back to something that we never thought we'd have, true connection with somebody else, an emotional feel. And so I would like to say that Learning disabilities are not an issue. They're not a struggle. I wasn't just trying to make problems. This is something we can create change for. We can help people. We can help all those people out there who are looking for solutions, who are looking to feel something. And we can connect on a deeper level that will allow us to understand each individual person. And so my teachers or the teachers out there will know what everybody is doing. They'll understand it. We'll create a better education system. And with technology, we can take children like myself, scared, timid students who are afraid of school and their peers, and turn them into successful entrepreneurs, nurses, lawyers, or maybe even a teacher. Thank you.